E, we back. I'm here on Discord, on Karuta, and as you can see, I'm looking at my trade ad. Now, if you've clicked on this video for a reason, you probably already know what a trade ad is. On these large public servers, like the official server that I'm on right now, you'll have a trading ads channel where you can post an ad to trade for various cards, maybe dies or frames or, or any other random stuff that you want to sell or to buy. And other people can come and, and make, make a deal with you. Uh, especially on a server as large and as the official server, these are pretty important. Um, and especially since you've got six hour cooldown on things like this and a 2000 Discord character limit, you have to make sure it's pretty optimal and efficient. Now, in this video, I'm not just going to be saying things like, oh, yes, make sure that you use your emojis to enhance it instead of wasting space and things. Uh, because so many people have said that before in guides, um, but people still ask how to make a good trade ad. So that's kind of what I'm going for today. I'm going to be talking about how to manage a trade ad and how to organize it. Uh, not just visually on the message, but just generally in the back so you can keep switching stuff out, make sure you're selling as much as possible, how to be as efficient as possible with your trade ad. That's more what we're going for today. So what's the first thing you want to do? The first thing you want to do is probably to make a trade tag. Now, I've also got up my trade tag here. You can see there's 70 cards on there. And every time I grab a card that I think is worth selling, but I don't really want myself, usually these are going to be cards with a reasonable number of wish lists. I'll put them on my trade tag. Now, personally, I put anything on my trade tag with above about 15 wish lists. Depends on the edition and the print and anything else, you know, probably selling a 15 wish list edition one high print isn't really worth doing. But a 10 wish list uh, mid print E4, much more worth doing. So it depends slightly, but yeah, I go for anything around 15 wish lists or more. Um, and in order to get all of those cards, because realistically that's quite a lot, that's quite a low number of wish lists. In order to get them all on a trader, and I've got a couple of tricks that we'll be going through later in this video. In order to help me organize this, I also have an ad tag. And this is a tag, and you can notice it's actually a fair bit bigger than my trade ad, uh, my, my trade tag. Uh, this is all of the cards that I have posted on an ad in the past. So in theory, someone could ask to buy one of these. This means that when I'm adding a card onto a new ad, I always make sure that I'm using cards from my trade tag because they aren't already out there. Whereas these ones are, I don't want to post the same card multiple times because that can make it kind of confusing for me to manage. I don't want to get people asking about cards that I've, I've already sold, for instance. So I always delete them off the trade ad when I've sold them. Plus that means I can put a new one on. So I've got these two tags to help me keep track of that. You don't have to do that. One tag is probably plenty, but I think two is pretty good. So when I'm adding a card onto a trade ad, I take it off the trade tag and put it onto the ad tag, right? Um, and then of course, when it gets sold, it gets removed off this tag just because it's no longer in my collection. So that's not something I have to manage. Uh, then you might be wondering, how did you manage to get 200 cards on a trade ad? Because obviously with the 2000 Discord character limit, there's not enough room for that. Well, I've got, as you can see, eight trade ads and they all have different cards on them. Uh, now you can see this one is slightly different from this one. This is my main trade ad. This is the one that I post the most often. It's a bit more properly organized to try and get people to buy stuff. Basically, I'm saying these are cards with over 100 wish lists. These ones are mid prints, accepting gems, also selling the frames and the dies and the whatever else. Mentions my trade and add tags down here as well. Whereas this one is what I use for lower wish list cards, stuff below 100, uh, maybe mid prints with, with barely any wish lists that I don't think people are going to be buying too often. And post these all together, just one ticket for anything. Now, this is something I would highly recommend doing, actually, because you might think, oh, you'll never sell a card with only 20 wish lists. No one will ever buy it. And if it's just one card, yeah, you're probably right, to be honest. But if you've got enough of them that you can make an entire ad, you can just post this onto your trade ads, say one ticket for anything, and then 
eventually someone might come across it because yes yeah, some of these characters might not have any wish lists but if I grab that all important information and search it in the trade ad I'm going to be one of the first people or in fact in this case the first person to pop up in the search result despite the fact that I posted this two days ago in fact two and a half days ago by this point. I'm still the first person that's selling it because barely any people sell this card. That means if anyone, you know, some some particularly uh, enthusiastic person of this, uh, of this series, they really wanted this particular card, they have to buy it from me because no one else is selling it. Pretty smart in my opinion. And I actually sell a lot of these one ticket cards. I think it's worth doing. So when you're making a trade ad, you have to decide, do you want it to be a high value trade ad that people are going to be buying from more often, you're going to be posting more often, or do you want a low value trade ad that maybe you can just post once and leave around for a while and people eventually buy stuff off it in a few days. I try not to mix the two because then you're going to be wasting space on the high value trade ad that gets posted more often and the stuff on the, the, the low value stuff on that ad is going to be around for ages, right? Then what I also do, as you can see, is have a lot of these low value trade ads, all with these different cards on them. And periodically I'll go, oh, time to add another one on. And I will grab all of those low value cards off my trade tag and I'll copy and paste this top and bottom bit here that I have and I'll put it on the trade ads thing and, and see what happens. Or what I might do is take the, the least recent one of here, this one was about half a month ago, and I'll just repost this with some more cards on the bottom. Because like I said, I always remove stuff when it's sold. So I've got plenty of characters left here that you can't even see the little little character limit that would appear down here if it was close. So I could add a bunch more cards to this and then repost it. And who knows, maybe people will buy from that. Just to demonstrate, that's what I'm gonna be doing now. So we'll, we'll try and take a few of these cards off here, these top four for now. So I'm gonna move those over to my add tag, just like so. There we go. And then I'm going to copy and paste them, like I said before. I'm not going to take the wish lists on these because they're such low wish lists anyway, it doesn't matter. No one really is buying these for the wish lists. They know who the characters are and that's why they're after them. I will copy and paste those, put them on the bottom there. Like I said, get rid of the wish lists and the, uh, the tag emojis. And then we can see the little character limit has popped up there because I'm a bit closer to it. I've got about 100 characters left. I can easily fit another character in there. So I'll go and grab number five, which is this one, put them on the, uh, the add tag as well, copy and paste this, put it onto the bottom of that trade ad. There we go. And see now we're much, much closer to, to zero characters left. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste that into the trade ads channel, delete the old one because we don't want duplicates. And now we can go all the way to the bottom and that's down there. Who knows? Maybe someone will buy something off that. Maybe they won't. Because it's all super low wish list stuff, actually the chances are people aren't going to be buying off it too quickly. But because it's super low wish list stuff, it'll still be the top of the search results when you search for these cards in a few days, maybe even a few weeks, and people can be buying off it weeks into the future. By having a lot of these just around in the message history, you end up selling quite a lot of one, one ticket cards, which is pretty nice. Now next, let's look at the format of the ad. Now I've talked about the difference between the low wish list and the high wish list trade ads and the high value ones. Um, and because this is the low value one, I've really optimized just for character space. I've not got the, the emojis of my tag on. I've not got the uh, wish lists on because I don't think it really matters too much. There's barely any other information here at all. It's just a list of cards, all the information that someone might need. They've got the card codes in case they want to go look up something about the cards. They might be looking for mid prints or mint condition cards or something particular edition so I think having all of that information is is pretty necessary and at the end of the day if they're copying and pasting it from their collection or or some information elsewhere that's been posted by the bot it's going to be in this format so you kind of need all this information but other than that it's just a list of all the stuff that's there I've even avoided putting the prices on because I've got one ticket for everything so it's super optimized for that 
2000 discord character limit uh, back a few years ago you would see people putting a lot of extra information and text on there in order to like grab your attention or something like that but the reality of the situation is as a buyer of cards you're not scrolling through all of these trying to look for something nice are you because as evidenced by the amount that's been posted just since my one a couple of minutes ago uh, there's way too many of them and you really can't read all of them You've just got to keep uh, searching in the search bar for the stuff that you want. And if you see the stuff that you want, you're going to message the guy that has it, no matter what their trade ad looks like. But now we go back to something like this, which has a bit more information on it. Firstly, there's the prices, of course, since these aren't all just one ticket. I've got to put the prices on. And it's got a bit of structure to it as well, so that if you are just seeing this as it goes past, because while you can't look at everything that goes past, with these high wish list cards, <laughs> these are particularly high wish list cards, but I mean, hey, they're, they're getting there. Um, you might just be looking in the channel to find someone selling the character you want. If they're high wish list enough, someone might be consistently selling them. And a lot of people realistically don't know how to use the Discord search bar. Um, so yeah, you might be sitting there looking for something like this and you want a bit of structure for it. So if someone's looking for mid prints, if someone's looking for high wish lists or whatever, they can see it straight away. Now, of course, this, this wish list and mid print uh, segregation that I've got on my one is just a personal choice you can pick whatever but I do advise you to have a bit of structure in there rather than just a huge list of cards especially then if you're trying to sell anything else you're going to want to probably have that separately and group it such that it makes sense you know I wouldn't just put this in the middle here because then probably no one would see it right so I've put all of that stuff at the bottom you can see this evidence just by looking at anyone else's trade as well. You've got a bit of separation. A lot of people decide to go for separation between editions. That's a reasonably popular thing to do. I would I would recommend doing it as well. You know, if you're looking for particular editions of cards, then you might want this. This is an excellent example of what I would not do, because this is a lot of information uh, and you can't really tell what it is uh, there's a lot of emojis here that are taking up that character limit this is what triple spaces no double spaces which is just kind of unnecessary there's a lot of formatting that you think maybe that kind of looks fancy but again it's really unnecessary and you've got things like this which is just taking up more than twice the amount of space that it needs to be in fact that doesn't really need to be there at all um, and then you've got uh, Things like this, you can immediately tell what's being sold. It's cards, they're all one ticket each, and this is what they are. You can see at a glance what's going on. Whereas here, you really have to read this text to even figure out what this is. Scared of being scammed? I, I can do collateral, just ask. And then there's all of these card codes. If I'm looking through all of these ads, I don't have time to read all of this. I'm not going to read all of that. I'm just going to go onto the next ad and see what that person's selling, aren't I? So this is an excellent example of the old style of ads that I would not recommend doing anymore because yeah, it's a lot more eye-catching, but at the end of the day, people are just going to be confused unless they look at it for a significant amount of time. And let me tell you, no one's going to be looking at it for a significant amount of time because all of these other ads have been posted since. This person also brings up another good point. Hey, what do you know? Just staring at ads can, can give good content for videos. Um, offers as opposed to putting prices on things. What, what would I suggest? Well, just looking at my ad, you can tell I suggest putting prices on. Uh, there are a lot of people out there, and I mean a lot of people, that will not buy a card purely because it doesn't have a price. They just won't even try. They go, look, it doesn't have a set price. I'm not bothered negotiating. I just want to buy my card and get on with my day, right? Now, of course, if you have the DM office thing, you're more likely to get a better deal. You can get multiple people giving you an offer and you can kind of auction a card off. But it's a lot more effort for you and it's a lot more effort for the people buying the card. I think at the end of the day, you're going to lose out on customers by doing that. Um, so, the difficulty then is that you have to actually price the cards. You have to check how much are they worth. And that isn't the easiest thing. What I would suggest doing, as I said earlier, is just to look in the search bar for other people selling that particular card. See what they're selling it at. See what maybe you could sell it at. Try and be a bit optimistic about it. If you see a card selling for three or four tickets, price it at four initially, because if someone buys it at four, you're happy. And if someone doesn't, you can lower the price later down to three and see what happens, you know? 
You can always reduce your price if a card isn't selling, but you can't increase the price after it's sold. No one's going to buy your cards if you increase the price after they've agreed to buy it. Also worth mentioning though, you don't want to put your prices too high because if they're too high and you wait too long before reducing them, then you're wasting space on your trade ad. You could be selling more and different cards, get those circling through. The more cards you're selling, the faster you're selling them, the lower your wish lists can be that you're putting up there. If you decide to only sell cards with over 500 wish lists, then your trade ad's going to be really small and character limit isn't such a huge problem. But then you're missing out on selling those other cards that you could be getting tickets for. Instead, maybe you're burning, you're just getting dust, it's not really worth doing. Whereas the lower you can have that wish list value, the more cards that you're selling for at least one ticket, you know, the more, more money you're making, basically, right? And that's pretty important. You want to be selling as much as possible. That's why I have mine as low as 15 wish lists. You talk to people, is 15 wish lists worth a ticket? Almost everyone would say no. But again, you'd be surprised at how many people would pay a ticket for a 15 wish list card if you're the only person selling it. Um, so you do want to try and be as optimal as possible and selling cards as quickly as possible, I think, is more valuable than selling a couple of cards at maybe a little bit more by asking for offers. So that was a long-winded way of saying I would put prices on cards if I were you, which is why I do it. But yeah, you can you can also ask for offers if you would prefer to do that, and I can see some advantages to doing that too. Anyway, I was expecting this to be much shorter than it actually ended up being, as always. Um, hopefully I said some valuable information at least. I feel like I said not as much as I was planning on saying, and also took way longer saying it than I was planning on taking. So all in all, uh, great, great organization me on that one. But yeah, hopefully you have a bit of better idea of how to organize trade ads in general. And while I have not talked about the stereotypical information of how to make your trade ad the best looking ever or anything like that, I think all in all it's kind of unnecessary. What's more important is that you're being more efficient with your character limit, you're selling cards as fast as possible, you're selling as many cards as possible uh, for the best price as possible because that is how you make money at the end of the day. But I am going to leave this one here, so I will see you next time. Bye!